I had always been um, a human rights activist and I'd always been interested in computers, but I hadn't really understood the relationship between them. And then around the late 1990s, as the dot-com revolution started taking off, or bubble, or whatever you want to call it, it really became clear to me that um, the category of things that you do with computers and the category of things that you do in the world were rapidly becoming the same category. And yet we treated computers and networks as though they were kind of special zone. Um, a zone where the norms, the laws, the rules, and the regulations were kind of up for grabs. And on the one hand, there were people saying, well, it's a new frontier, and um, we'll have no rules, and no rules will ever be imposable upon it because our superior technology will make your inferior laws irrelevant. And then there was another group of people saying, you know, um, we are going to impose rules on these systems, and the rules that we impose on them are going to be something like the rules we impose on cable television. And this thing that you think of as a medium for conducting your whole life, life's affairs on is really ultimately going to be kind of a cross between a shopping mall and a, and a cable TV network. And it'll have the rules to match. It'll, be, it'll, it'll have uh, kind of the, a combination of the, the heavily uh, censored and, and filtered view that you get from a cable network with the totally unaccountable authoritarian mall cop to go along with it. And I thought that's a pretty dystopian view. And this was around the time of Napster, and it got me really thinking that um, after the Napster shutdown, that there was really something wrong going on, that we really needed to get more involved. And as time went by, I've had this growing realization that um, not only uh, is everything that we do in the real world also something we do in the digital world, but also that our computers have enormous power to harm us as well as help us, that they bristle with cameras and microphones and location sensors. They're our father confessors. They know who our friends are. They know what we think and what we say and what we do. And that if we can't regulate them so that they act as our servants and as loyal friends, and instead they end up being kind of snitches um, who reveal all of our secrets to the state, um, and, and to crooks and, and corporate hijackers who, who, who are managed to interpose themselves between us and our computers, that we're really in terrible trouble. The greatest current threat to digital rights is probably the combination of uh, nerd determinism, this idea I said I talked about before, this idea that uh, superior technology makes inferior laws irrelevant, so that when you hear about some barmy idea for regulating computers, you don't really need to do anything, because the computers will muddle through somehow. And nerd um, fatalism, which says that, you know, if you go to Whitehall, you'll end up um, smelling like someone from Whitehall, that there's no way to, to get involved in the muck of politics without getting covered in muck. Uh, and so we, we just have to steer clear of it. It's, 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 it's hopeless, and nothing good will ever come of it. And I think that the combination of those two is really deadly because, you know, as, as um, someone once said, just because you're not interested in politics, it does not mean that politics will not be interested in you. And staying away from politics, either because you think technology will make laws irrelevant or because there's no good way to influence laws, just opens the field for people who don't cherish either of those illusions to make things very bad indeed. If there's one thing that we've learned in the fights about digital uh, civil liberties and digital rights over the last 25 years, it's that um, in addition to the grassroots, the, the people who take um, action in a onesie twosie way, calling up their MP or telling their friends or writing a vital piece of code, that you also need a, a concentrated group of people who um, uh, we can all outsource a bit of our conscience to. You know, um, I don't know about you, but, you know, my life is mostly taken up with, with all of the day-to-day, -day, with raising my family and earning my living. And even though I call myself an activist and spend what feels to me to be an awful lot of time working on these issues, I'm always conscious of the fact that um, most of these issues I never get near. I never have any time to do anything significant about. We need groups of people who do nothing but think about and take action on these issues. Uh, for me, org is a bargain. Right? The internet is so important, and org is really the only group doing nothing but trying to defend it uh, in the UK. And it, they ask for so little, and they do so much, 
Uh, and I would lose so much if we lost the internet that not supporting orgs seems um, very uh, pound, uh, penny wise and pound foolish. It really feels like, like the wrong kind of bargain to be making. And that's why you should join org. <laughs>